But first, we're taking a deep dive tonight into Florida's unemployment benefits, and it's all relative to the cost of living. Welcome here to ABC Action News at 6, everyone. I'm Paul Legron. And I'm Lauren St. Germain. Florida has not raised its weekly unemployment benefits since 1998 to factor in the rising cost of living. It's sitting at 275 a week, and it's one of the lowest in the country. Legislation to raise it is dead in Tallahassee. And tonight, Heather Lee is going in-depth on this one, how this is now preventing unemployed Floridians from getting back on their feet. As the number of people filing for unemployment grew into the millions last year, William Sipla began to see just how vulnerable he was. It was daunting. It was, it's not real until it hits you, you know, it, that you might be, you might lose your home. He describes the feeling as catastrophic. It was just two days ago he reached out to ABC Action News after receiving an eviction notice. He's one of many stuck in a revolving glitch in the Connect system, locking him in and out of his account, keeping him from his money. It's like they try to put roadblock in front of roadblock to keep people from collecting their benefits. You know, when you've worked 15, 20 years and you need, you know, sudden help, you're the bad guy. It makes getting ahead nearly impossible, especially when you take a look at how much jobless Floridians are getting per week in unemployment benefits. $275 is the maximum, yet some aren't even getting that. And the cost of living hasn't been factored into that number in more than two decades. The economy is, is completely different than it was 30 or so years ago. But the policies haven't changed to keep up with those changes. The cost of living is 64% higher now than it was in 1998. To break that down, for every $1 you spent in 98, you're now spending $1.64. That can make it very tough for people in certain circumstances. That could lead to uh, people losing their apartment, losing their house. Uh, in the ending up living in their car. If the state did factor in the cost of living right now, the unemployment weekly benefit would nearly double at $444. If that was raised, I mean, it's just going to go back to them. Uh, I mean, because I'm going to use that money to go shop and, and buy things and, and, and live. And, and it's just going to all cycle back. And as Florida continues to open and businesses say they can't find enough employees to hire, some people can't understand why folks who are still unemployed aren't going back to work. Michael Snipes, an economics instructor at USF in Sarasota, says it goes hand in hand with minimum wage. When we think of these people, we have this incorrect picture of who these people are. It's not just some teenager. It's not somebody who's living off the system. It's people with families. It's adults. It's people in their 30s. Folks who may not be able to take on a job that only pays minimum wage, especially if they have children and can't work multiple jobs. Instead of saying, why aren't people taking these $8 an hour jobs? Well, why are these firms offering such a low wage in the first place? Voters approved Amendment 2 last year, which gradually increases the minimum wage to $15 an hour by 2026. But some lawmakers in the House, including Governor Ron DeSantis, do not think the unemployment weekly benefit needs to be raised. Increased benefits? Look, no, I mean, I, th I think we're getting people back to work. Uh, we're, we're, our unemployment is, is, is what it is. It's fine. We gave the governor a chance to explain why, but we never received a response back. In the Senate, lawmakers voted unanimously to increase the benefits by $100. But because the House doesn't agree, it's off the table for now. Something Sipla finds perplexing and disheartening. We spent billions of dollars here, billions of dollars there. But it seems like we don't put the money in to support our own people. Heather Lee, ABC Action News.